Norm Weimer here, NWA Championship International Wrestling. I'm joined by the franchise, Shane Douglas. And i um, been wanting to catch up for a little while here. And uh, we all know the history. We all know the past. We don't have to, to rehash all that. Uh, but uh, you are back in the National Wrestling Alliance. And uh, with all that being said, I don't know. Can you term this as a successful return? I don't even see it as a return. Uh my take on this is simple, Norm. Uh, if, if I've been nothing in my career, I've been an opportunist. Where's the best place to apply my skills? Where do I have the greatest chance of success? But that, in my head, my career is, is something that's past tense. Uh, I, I don't harbor ideas of more belts or more main events or, or being the top dog in the, in the company anymore. Now, I speak as a fan of wrestling now. I've been a lifelong fan of wrestling since I was five years old and used to get sent to my bedroom for you know, jumping off the couch with my brothers and sisters. A great wrestling match, regardless of where it is, I can watch that 24-7. Uh, sadly, I've not seen any great wrestling or very, very little great wrestling in my sport over the last decade or better. Uh, I don't like where the sport has gone. Uh, when you have the number one company disallowing their announcers to even use the word wrestling, wrestlers, wrestling ring. Uh, look, I can take, if I start a sport and I put shoulder pads and helmets, hip pads and cleats on my, on my players and give them a pigskin or a football, I can call it anything I want, but the fans know it's football. I can call it tiddlywinks, but they know it's not that, it's, it's, it's football. So to me, it's bizarre that the number one company, or what has traditionally been the number one company in our sport, has gone to such an, an outrageous place that you can't even call it wrestling anymore. Uh, I don't understand where the negative connotation comes from in that. Then you have the number two company, only by proxy of the spending, uh, having spent close to $400 million and nothing to show for it. Least of all, a great wrestling product. Uh, as I reach this stage in my life, I want to be able to spend the next 5, 50, 150, how many, how many I've got left, I want to be able to sit at home and turn on the television like I did when I was a kid and watch great wrestling. I don't believe I'm going to get that from the WWE. I know I'm not going to get it from TNA. Uh, I had hopes with Ring of Honor. Uh, I think that's sort of going its route. Uh, to me, the NWA has, had always stood for the company that had the the uh, the litany of years behind it, it, it was the the uh, the wrestling company. Even when the WWF and the NWA were sparring to to find that place back in the early '80s, I was the kid that was watching the NWA on cable uh, and barely paying attention to WWF. I wasn't a Hulk Hogan guy. Nothing against them. I was a Ric Flair guy. I was the guy that liked the technicians, like Harley Race, like Ricky Steamboat. Uh, Terry and Dory Funk, uh, the Briscoe brothers, uh, Ric Flair, go down the list of all of them. Uh, that's what I want to see back. And as I take a look around the landscape, I, like I said, I, I don't believe I'm going to get it from Vince. I know I'm not going to get it from Dixie as her parents apparently get close to selling the, uh, the vestiges of what's left of TNA. Uh, I want to see something that's wrestling. I want to see two guys competing in the ring putting on wrestling moves, counter moves, takedowns, competing against each other, not dancing with each other. Uh, I could care less if this guy's a dead man coming out of the grave or the world's smartest man with seven PhDs, the dean. I care if he's a tough guy or not. Is he a, is he a athlete or not? Can he wrestle or not? That's what I care about. You know, let's face it, when I turn on professional football, professional boxing, professional baseball, it has nothing to do with this coach is doing this to this coach's wife or dumping concrete in that coach's car. It's this coach's team playing this coach's team and who wins in the end. To me, as an athlete, that's pretty damn compelling enough. I don't need all the smoke and mirrors on top of it. But I think fans would uh, see what you said a little bit earlier as a little bit of a startling admonishment that uh, being the top dog is not what motivates you at this point. No, no that's look, in our... I mean, I, I never thought I would hear the franchise say that. <laughs> well, look, I mean, in the heart of a champion, there's always the hope that you could go on forever. Sadly, we know that that's not true. Age catches up with everybody. 
Uh, I don't want to be 50, 55, 60, 60 plus trying to convince fans uh, that I'm still the, the toughest guy in the world. Uh, I proved that pretty definitively for the 23 years I played the franchise, uh, that I was a damn tough character, I was a damn tough wrestler, and was able to complete, in other words, my, my ass could cash the checks that my mouth wrote. Uh, but now, after thir- going on 34 years in the professional wrestling sport, uh, I think I have something to offer to the kids in the dressing room that are looking for direction. When I was a kid in the dressing room, I had Harley Race, Ric Flair, Terry Funk, you know, the, the whole list of names dressing right across from me. All I had to do was keep my mouth shut and eyes and ears open. Uh, the, the one thing I didn't need uh, was to look for a role model. There was plenty of those. Uh, I want to play the role model now, and I think, to me, that's where I could be the top dog. To, to be the top dog of teaching these kids in the dressing room what it is I learned sometimes by getting spit in the face and poked in the chest by Bill Watts and bullied by the older wrestlers or whatever else. To make damn sure that I learned. They obviously saw something in me. They didn't just do it to pick on me. They did it because they saw something and wanted to make sure I, I fulfilled that promise. But at the same time, you don't want to be the stepping stone. You don't want to be the guy that uh, somebody feels that they – have to beat to prove themselves you just had a uh, nwa midwest title match with sebastian rose yeah. who cheap shotted you after the match got right in your face nose to nose and said <laughs> your ass just got franchised yeah i mean you, you can't tell me that that doesn't fire up oh the sure franchise it does. shane douglas look, but look i'm the guy that wrote the book of being crass and in your face you know so i'm not gonna lose sleep, uh, you know, or go track him down at his house and slice his throat tonight while he's sleeping because he did something that I originated. Uh, but that's what I'm looking for. As a, The reason I'm in the ring right now in the NWA is to lead by example, but to also get a feel for the guys in the ring. I can watch, and by watching you can pick up a good bit, but by being in the ring and feeling and encountering, I, I can get a much better idea to be able to suggest to the NWA, this guy has it, this, guy, this guy's getting it, doesn't quite have it yet, and, and be truthful and honest with it. So that, that's more the reason I'm in the ring. Uh, look, you know, what Sebastian did, uh, like I said, it, it'd be sort of disingenuous of me to sit here and say, oh, that SOB, I'm going to go out and kill him because he did something that I did a million times in my career. Uh, kudos to him. I mean, that, that is what our sport's about, being in your face, being larger than life. Uh, uh, on a personal level, sure, I'm not thrilled with it, but on a professional level, my purpose of being here in the NWA, that, that I had to spend a considerable amount of time talking to the powers that be to convince them that I wasn't here with subterfuge on my mind or, or trying to finish a job that I started 20 years ago, 19 years, whatever it was, uh, with the throwdown of the belt. Uh, at the time that that happened, you know, one thing that happens with the passage of time, every day that you tear off the calendar, is different from the day before. Every month, the, the, the month before. Every year changed from the year before. Every decade changed from the decade before. The parameters of where the wrestling business is today are completely different than they were in 1993. Yes, there are some similarities, uh, but the landscape is much different. Uh, I, I don't yet see another company stepping up to grab the brass ring like ECW did, but I believe the NWA can be that. If anybody has the, the right to lay claim to being the wrestling company, and my as a sidebar before I go any further, I'm the guy that has been preaching for 10 years. We need to bring the sport of professional wrestling back. You know, we've done, we've, we've, you know, for God's sakes, we've seen the Hardys dive off the top of the Titan Tron. We've seen people set on fire. We've seen tables and chairs, people falling off the scaffolding. We've seen every cartoon character possibly uh, that you could conceive of. What more can we do in the, in, in, in the mode of entertainment? Uh, my argument would be it's not very entertaining, and what we have to do is go back to the future. We have to, the one thing that nobody's tried for the last 10 years, as our sport has gone like this, ratings-wise, attendance-wise, dollar-wise, profit-wise, the one thing that nobody has tried is professional wrestling. I, I, out, I talk to fans every weekend, Norm, when I go out last weekend in Germany, the weekend before that in England, every weekend in this country, Every single fan I've talked to in the last several years has said the exact same thing, that it's not about 
uh, them coming back. It's not a question of whether they're going to watch Vince or not, TNA or not. They're not. They're not. They've turned their backs on it. They've walked away. They're not buying into the sports entertainment crap. But they also then finish up by saying, if I could see something like old NWA, old UWF, old ECW, I'd be back to the table again. So with that said, it's as obvious to me as the nose on my face what needs to be done. What better place to do it? You could recreate the wheel. We could go start a company from scratch and say, okay, we're going to build a company that's a wrestling company. You have the NWA that every wrestling fan universally identifies as the wrestling company. Build on that. We have the, we have the launch pad here with this. Now let's see what we can do with it, if we can. All right, I have two questions left. One about you, one about the NWA. The one about you is if the, ed the edge that you wrestled with in the past is, is, is what made you the success that you were. Yeah. If, does that edge still exist? And if it doesn't, do you run the risk of getting hurt in the ring? Absolutely, but the edge, the, I don't have to yell and scream to prove that, that the edge is there. Uh, I think the very fact that Sebastian Rose did what he did, you know, capitalize on, on, an, on an existing injury, and then afterwards dotted the eye by knocking me down with the belt, I think if you ask Sebastian Rose in his head at that second, he realized the edge is still there. Uh, but I, I'm maybe not explaining it properly. I don't feel that I have anything to prove to, to go out. If, if I would have gone out and beaten Sebastian Rose in that match, if I would have gone out and beat everybody I've ever wrestled from this point forward, there's really, I mean, the, the, the wins column in my career is so much larger than the loss column in my career. I've lost my share of matches, and they're not fun. But it's not about that to me. You know, some guys, you know, keep a book, and they can tell you exactly what the number is at this stage of their career. I have no idea what the number is. But I'd be willing to bet that the wins column is vastly larger than the loss column. Uh, the, the belts that I've won, so numerous that I can't even keep track of in my head. I have to go back and look in, in, in the books to see what, what, what is there and what's not there. It's not about that to me anymore because, the, I mean, I, I could win the belt again, and that would make me a four-time world champion, right? Five if you count the first NWA. But, I, it, but you see, it, it, to me, it's, it, I started out as a snot-nosed kid in New Brighton, Pennsylvania with just a dream of having a professional wrestling match. I never planned on a career, was never so pretentious to believe to be a champion, uh, would have never ever could have possibly guessed a multi, multiple time world champion, multiple time world tag team champion, multiple time uh, uh, lesser uh, uh, company uh, champions. Uh, that was something I didn't plan on. So for me, I don't measure my success and what happens in the ring on, a, on any given night. If I lost every match from this point to the time I, I hang the boots up, I still think the, the, the wins column would be much larger. Uh, but don't take uh, what I would consider maturity, uh, that I'm not out here yelling and screaming and doing all the franchise stuff that I did for all those years as being that I, I no longer possess the edge or, or the fire. It's there. I'm just, uh, to me, I want to focus it a little more rather than just burning down the forest i'd rather focus like a laser beam to try to help the nwa get from where it is now trying to restart the, the, this entity back up and bring it back these kids in the dressing room have every right to have a career that i had uh and i'm sure like me they're not so pretentious to dream of any kind of future but 20 years from now you should be talking to sebastian rose uh or one of these any of these other guys in the back here about the career that they've had and what they're trying to do at that stage of the career, and I think we can do that with the NWA. When you see, though, the last question, that the NWA, uh, with New Japan Wrestling, New Japan Wrestlers coming over here, also uh, NWA goes over to Osaka and sells out arenas, does that give you hope that the NWA is on its way sure. back? Look, the one thing the franchise has never done is, is chased uh, – uh, unicorns in my dreams you know it was never about anything unrealistic what i'm saying with the nwa and the potential that i see here is in large part based on its history but also based in large part on what i see both as the landscape of professional wrestling today uh but also the potential that the nwa possesses right now every one of those fans that i've spoken to over the last several years every one of them mentioned the nwa they would mention other companies too but they've all mentioned the nwa I firmly believe that with this talent in, in, in this dressing room 
and other talent that's out there floating around and soon to be floating around because of the closing down of, of uh, one of the companies. Uh, I firmly believe that if that, if that talent is all pulled into the same dressing room and built on the platform that the fans identify as being the wrestling platform, then we give the fans wrestling and people get in the ring and wrestle a competitive wrestling match, not dance a, a scripted wrestling storyline, but wrestle a competitive wrestling match in front of the fans. I have no doubt that those fans will come back to the table. The fans that have left us for the UWF, the MMA, uh, and shoot fighting, uh, or whatever other form of, of, of sports entertainment they've gone to. Uh, they, you know, I've said this you know, so many times, I feel like I'm you know, paraphrasing myself, but those wrestling fans haven't been sucked up by UFO. To my knowledge, I hope there hadn't been a rapture that we got left behind. Uh, they're still there. And they're still dying to see Ricky Steamboat versus Ric Flair. Unfortunately, they can't get that because Ricky Steamboat's retired and Flair's soon to be retired. He should have already. Uh, but they want to see two guys with that kind of a skill set doing what Ricky Steamboat and Ric Flair did all those years ago. If we bring that to them, I can't fathom in my mind how it could be a failure. Uh, and again, to, and to wrap it up, I believe that the NWA has possesses all of those because of the connection. To the, and I, you know, you mentioned Japan because the Japanese have a very strong uh, sense of identity to past. You know, and and they they know the past history. What, what I'm talking about, the Japanese fans understand the NWA history, and they know that with that, uh, they can uh, re reach back and capture some of that magic to put forward and build to the future. If we do that. I don't know how we can fail. No guarantee of success, but much greater chance of success if we build on those things, all this stuff that we're talking about. Well, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you for doing the interview. Thank you for being here. Thank you, brother. In NWA Championship International Wrestling. You've always been one of my favorite performers, and now you're one of my favorite people. Thank you. Now, let's just hope that a year or five from now we, we look back at this interview and say, hey, remember that day we were talking about... <laughs> I believe we can. Right. Thank I, you, brother. I hope we can. <laughs> Good talking Very to much. you. <laughs> Franchise Shane Douglas. All right. So more coming up here on Powerbomb Wrestling, the superstars of NWA Championship International Wrestling.